This is brought to you by the Alumni Association of PISJES. Hey guys, we'll be continuing our lectures on the topic of measuring devices. We have all seen a ruler. It is one of the measuring devices. And it is very common, so you would know about this. In our previous lecture, we saw a vernier caliper. And in this lecture, we'll move on to a newer one, or a much more accurate one, micrometer screw gauge or gauge or however you want to pronounce it so this is the measuring device that we will be talking about in this lecture why are we switching from from a vernier caliper to micrometer screw gauge why do we need this that is because like a vernier caliper was adding a digit of accuracy to the measurement of a ruler. The micrometer screw gauge is, will add a digit of accuracy to the readings of the vernier caliber. For example, a ruler had an accuracy, A double C for accuracy, of 0 0.1 centimeters or 1 millimeter. A vernier caliper had an accuracy, as we just saw, 0 0.00 sorry 0 0.01 centimeters or 0 0.1 millimeters however a micrometer screw gauge has an accuracy of 0 0.001 centimeters or 0 0.01 millimeters so like in a ruler we could only get sorry in a ruler let me just clear this in a ruler, we were getting our answers in the form of, for example, 35.6 centimeters. Using a vernier caliper, we were able to achieve the second decimal place, like 35.65, the second decimal place, accurately. And for the micrometer screw gauge, we will be able to get the third one, 35.656 centimeters. We will be able to get this digit accurately. So we are switching from a vernier caliper to a micrometer screw gauge because of the accuracy it's providing us with. Okay, so how does a micrometer screw gauge look like? It looks like this, guys. This is a micrometer screw gauge. It's pretty simple. This is the frame of the micrometer screw gauge it's made up of iron. So this is just for stability. This is the anvil and this is the spindle. So what happens is your object that you want to measure comes right here in between in between these two and this spindle is movable it can move like this by the help of this we can just pull it out like this by rotating this you can just move it out like this so you can measure put a, an object here and then close the spindle so it will get fixed here so you fix the object between the annual and the spindle okay this is lock okay like we had that little turning thing in the vernier calipers before to switch uh, to uh, lock the readings this is the lock uh, here this after you lock this this will not move anymore so you can just take the readings easily so the procedure is that you put the object here you turn the this is called the thimble it turns around like this it will turn around like this so you turn the thimble and the object gets fixed between the anvil and the spindle. You have to make sure that it is not fixed very tightly, just firmly, not very tight. And once it's 
firmly uh, it's firmly pressed between the anvil and spindle you turn the ratchet once the ratchet just makes sure that there is not not a lot of pressure on this so that it does not alter the readings otherwise you can just keep compressing it and you know you just keep if it's a compressible object you can just keep rotating it and it will just go inside the object and you wouldn't notice that but a ratchet makes sure that not not a lot of pressure is being exerted on the object well these are two scales here this is the sleeve scale or the main scale and this is the thimble scale this is a rotating thimble scale it rotates like this you can see the readings here it rotates and this is the main scale which is fixed so this is the micrometer screw gauge and it is very similar to a vernier scale or vernier caliper sorry now let's see some of the steps that we would use to find out the readings first of all steps to find dimension using micrometer screw gauge okay so the first step would be to first of all look at the main scale reading or the sleeve reading now as we have seen here is the picture this is the sleeve reading you can see from here if I just do it full screen you can see that there are some marks over here this is one mark two marks three marks four five six seven so these are some marks over here so what you can do with this is each mark here is representing a millimeter over here so this is five you can see one two three four and five you go on this you can you will only count the ones that you can see okay this is five this is six this is seven so you can say that this is seven millimeters the one on the top give you the whole numbers as in the proper integers one two three four five six seven however there's always one on the bottom which gives you a 0.5 mark reading so if you can see this is this is zero this is 0.5 and one 1.5 2 2.5 and 3 3.5 and 4 4.5 5 5.5 6 6.5 and 7 so you can you have to for the main scale reading you have to see how much of the mar how many of the marks you can see on the main scale so for now we can see seven marks so this means in millimeters seven millimeters in centimeters this means 0 0.7 centimeters now this is the first part the main scale reading now it's time for the thimble scale reading Let's look at the same picture here. How do we find out the thimble scale reading? Let me just full screen. Now for the thimble scale, this line, the line on the sleeve is called, the, the horizontal line is called a datum. This is the origin line. So we will see the mark on the thimble scale which coincides with the origin line. Okay. So in, in this case this is 35 this is 36 and this is 37 that is coinciding with the mark on the datum line this is the 37th mark coinciding you can have a look this is a 37th mark coinciding with the datum line so this is the 
37th mark but this is not the thimble scale reading it's again like the vernier in the vernier scale vernier calipers we had the vernier scale reading and for that we had a mark first which again was multiplied with the accuracy and here again we'll do the same thing we'll multiply this mark with the accuracy of the vernier uh, sorry the micrometer screw gauge which in this case is 0 0.01 millimeters or 0 0.001 centimeters for now I will say I am just calculating in millimeters so 37 times 0 0.1 millimeters would give me 0 0.37 millimeters which would be our thimble scale reading Now if you remember from before our sleeve reading or main scale reading was 7 millimeters. Our thimble reading is 0 0.37 millimeters. So our final answer would be 7 point three seven millimeters just add the two up and you will get your final reading so this is how you calculate a reading in the micrometer screw gauge first step one the main scale reading the main scale reading is found by looking at marks on the sleeve on the sleeve part of the micrometer screw gauges so the marks on the sleeve will tell you the main scale reading. The, uh, you will, uh, for example, if you can see eight millimeters, so the main scale reading would be, for example, if you can see eight marks, sorry, I meant to say, if you see eight marks, then the main scale would mean eight millimeters. Now step two was the thimble scale reading thimble scale reading is measured by seeing the datum line and by looking at the point that it coincides with on the thimble scale that point is written down you can note it down for example in this case it was 37th mark multiply it with the accuracy in this case it's 0 0.01 millimeters and uh, there you go you get your thimble scale reading which is 0 0.37 millimeters then just add the two up and you will get your reading on the micrometer screw gauge so guys i will leave you here and we'll be talking about this in the next lecture and we we'll, uh, come up with more examples if you were not clear, clear about this then watch the next video and we'll be doing more examples so that you were clear about this so thanks for watching guys take care